Lewin's three-step organizational change model. Unfreeze, change, freeze. Made by Jonathan Vasquez and Justin So. To start us off, we begin with Kurt Lewin. He was the creator of this theory, and he was from Germany, and he moved to America in the 1930s. He is also known as the founder of social psychology. His interest groups led to research focusing on factors that influence people to change, and the three stages needed to make change successful. The three stages are of the theory of change are commonly known as unfreeze, change, and freeze. His idea was presented in 1947, but it is still used today. That's him. To begin with, we'll start with the first stage, unfreeze. Yeah, that's the melting process right there. Unfreeze. Getting people to see that change is necessary in moving people away from their comfort zone. It's basically getting us ready for change. The more it seems that it is necessary, the more urgent it will appear and thus will cause people to be more motivated to make the change. The example of this is procrastination. The closer to the deadline, the higher the chance of getting into action and getting the job done. If there is no action or deadline, people will do nothing and just coast. Now unfreeze. What people usually tend to prefer is having a sense of control and finding a comfort zone that is relatively safe. This establishes their sense of identity with their environment. This comfortable environment that has, has been created steers people away from any change or alternative, even if it offers a significant benefit. People usually fall into two different groups, those that are ready to change and those that resisted and dragged their feet. Everyone knows these, knows these quotes. This is how my father did it, and his father, and his father. I will do the same. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Now next, we want to implement unfreeze. In this part, understanding is the aspect of this stage. You have to understand why you need to change for change to occur. You, first, what you want to do is collect data to reinforce what needs to be changed and determine why it is so crucial to do so. Without the support from upper level management, change will be extremely difficult to achieve. When there is backing from above, it is easier to get things going. Also, find out the supports and resistances early on before this will help prepare for problems and successes further down the process. For change to occur, try to convey the vision and strategy as much as possible so people will be on board for the transition. The why is also extremely important. People will be less likely to change if they do not know the reason for it. Oh, use huge emphasis on the why aspect. There, of course, will be resistances during the journey from unfreezing to refreezing. What is important is that managers address it in a productive way while also addressing the reasons for change. Manage doubts and understand their concerns, but always keep an open mind. And but be sure to, to reassure them that change is beneficial to them. The second stage that we will address is change. People become comfortable in temporary situations where they are not accountable for the hazards of normal work. And we're talking about change may be substituted for real action. This stage is the most difficult to implement because people are at an unfrozen state and heading towards something entirely different. People will resist because they will be unsure about new and different things. People will be learning about the change and they will need support during the entire process. And remember, the first step is the hardest one. And a classic mistake that leaders tend to make is that they will take this change and journey on their own at their own pace. And after they finish with it, they'll expect others to just jump on the same journey, but quickly and faster than is needed. Now one thing to be aware of is the pleasant trap. It's better to travel hopefully than arrive. This means that people might just sit around and talk about change while doing nothing. It's an event where people just talk and never take any action. Planning and conversing is important, but the end goal will never be achieved without taking the first step. Implementing change transition. 
Communication during the process is important, especially conveying the benefits of new changes. The cause and effect reasoning will help workers and employees who are against it better understand the need for it. A well-informed employee is helpful during the process of change and will also help to prepare them for it. Dispel rumors, answer questions openly and honestly so that there are no discrepancies during the process. Do not take too long to address problems for it shows a weakness in the implementation that we're trying to establish in the organization. Empower action. Offer lots of opportunities for employees to be involved. Again, support is crucial to the stage. This can come in different forms such as coaching and leadership training. Create short-term accomplishments and wins to reinforce the change. Step Stage three, refreeze. Kurt Lewin refers to this stage as freezing, although a lot of people refer to it as refreezing. As the name suggests, this stage is about establishing stability once the, change, once the changes have been made. The changes are accepted and should become the new norm. People form new relationships and become comfortable with their routines. This can take time. There might be hesitation and reluctance to conform. Beware of people falling into a state of change shock. Often many wonder how many more times will there be a new change implemented and is this work and effort even worth it? Which may lead to discouraged and inefficient and ineffective workers. Now implementing refreeze. During the implementation phase, it is important for top management to set a positive tone when establishing change. A top-down top -down approach would best suit this initiative. Managers should encourage an open-door policy in order to establish a sense of support and encouragement to ask questions and to create a sense of importance. Identify individuals that have an influence in the organization that might not fully support the initiative and have their, voices, have their concerns voiced. So that, they may be, so that they may alleviate and eliminate their barriers preventing change. Llewellyn's concerned about reinforcing the change and ensuring that the desired change is accepted and maintained into the future. Without this, people tend to go back to doing what they are used to doing. This is probably what Kurt Lewins meant by freezing or refreezing, supporting the desired change to make sure it continues and is not lost. Possibly establishing a reward system so that employees feel that by implementing the change, they're also getting incentives from it. Provide support and change. Have training available to employees. Keep everyone informed and have support ready for employees. Now, how does this unfreezing change and refreezing relate to technology and MIS. One could take the example of change, switching our services from BlackBerry enterprise servers, servers to iPhone, possibly explaining to the employees the benefits of changing to iPhone such as more support, a more reliable network would be ways of, of establishing this. Uh, having top management relate to the employees that the changes for the best and that we will see dividends paid in the future. This is one example of how this theory could be applied to technology.